Well guys, we're finally to the point. We're gonna get Ms. Wanda's floor cleaned up a little bit here. Uh, the corn has dried in the house. I went through it and took out any of the kernels on the cobs that uh, I thought might be bad or have any kind of issues on them and put them in a bucket here for the, uh, for the chickens. Uh, we'll grind that up for them. But you know, like I went through, if there was a bad kernel in it somewhere, I went ahead and took them all out uh, before we actually do the process that we're gonna do. And I checked it all to make sure there was no uh, alpha toxin looking poisoning or anything like that on them. Uh, just kind of took my time and went through it. Uh, you know, and every now and then you'll still find one. I see one there that I, I, I missed a thing on. I always go back and recheck them. Uh, even though we're going to be freezing this when we get through with it, I still don't want the bugs in it. You know? And when we run it through the sheller, if there happens to be any uh, weevils or anything like that still down next to the cob in there, then uh, they'll fall out and, and get out of it. This is just going to be a process. It's going to take you long. Uh, this is something we usually do every year. Except this year, we've got the new machine to make our cornmeal with and our flour and stuff of that nature. Now you're going to see a few cobs here like this that just have the tips left on them. What I've done was I took my choicest cobs and I saved the, the kernels off of them for seed uh, for next year and I just left the ends on. Uh, we're, we're going to be using those uh, and I probably will use those for animal feed. I think I'm going to lay them over to the side for the, uh, for the animal feed. The rest of them here, we're going to be shelling them out. Show you how our old antique sheller that I built works. I'm going to uh, I'm going to link a video in the description below or above in the cards wherever we end up putting it at. Uh, the sheller that we're going to be using, I actually built this thing way back when we first started uh, YouTube, and. I think that uh, I think you'll enjoy the video, uh, getting to see how old this thing is. It, it may look like it's in mint condition, but we take care of our stuff. It, it hasn't been misused or abused or anything to that nature. So it looks like we're gonna have to make a couple of trips here to get all this corn. Okay guys, this is our corn shelling box here. I built this box many, many years ago. Uh, we have a YouTube video on it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is an old corn sheller. I picked this up at an antique auction. Gosh, I don't even remember how many years ago it's been. It's been a long time. And uh, it's got a lot of features on it here. Um, it's got a place like this end right here. This is made to, uh, you know, you, you stick the corn in there and it takes it off that end and you can turn it around and do the same exact thing on, on that end right there. And that takes it off of both ends and then you can drop it into here. And then it shoves it right back out on you. I mean, to me, the, the technology in that, as simple looking as it is, is just pure genius to me. I mean, and then you end up with a corn cob that can be used in the garden. It's all steel, American made. I mean, that old, it's an antique. And it spits it right back out. Now this one here was a little bit smaller cob. You'll find one every so often that you have to kind of finish up with your hands, especially one like this one. Usually it works better with your old big ears, but look at that. It's almost like a, this is a Hickory King. It's almost like a pencil cob, corn. Look at that long cob. Amazing, guys. These old big ears get to be Sometimes you have to, to adjust. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is an adjustment on it right here. You can you can definitely adjust with that. Let's see if we can. Yeah. back out in your hand. Nice deal. Guys, I, I was trying to do this where you could watch it kind of slow motion with the camera and you just really can't do it in slow motion. It's got to be done fast. <clears throat> I wanted to watch it. We'll try to get it where you could watch the corn come back up through here and all, but it's just not possible in slow motion. These are some big old, the, what it, it ain't that the corn's so big, the kernels are so large. These kernels are huge. Well guys, we've got one five gallon bucket uh, shelled out. Uh, I ended up with this much corn and this, uh, and this is pretty heavy. This is like probably 30 pounds maybe. We need to weigh it and see. I guess we probably should weigh it. Uh, that's a lot of corn right that's there. A, that's, it's heavy. Now, one thing I've noticed, uh, this is my first year growing Hickory King. Uh, I've never grown it in my life other than this year. It's a lot harder to shell with a sheller than my Danny corn is. And it's only because the kernels are so large. Uh, the thing broke a lot of them up, you know, taking them off. That's why I wouldn't want to use this if I was trying to save it for seed. I wouldn't want to use it to, you know, to take the seeds off. I hand shelled all my seed ones. But uh, it's got a lot of corn on it now. I'll say that. The cobs are really tiny. My Danny corns, a lot of the cobs will be a little bit bigger in diameter. Some of them will be littler. Uh, but they're average. They're pretty close to this size. But the kernels are, on my Danny corn are long and slender. It's a dent corn also, but this is a short, fat corn, which makes it a lot harder to run through this, uh, this sheller here. But nevertheless, I shell that whole five gallon bucket in just, I don't know, maybe eight or nine minutes. Can't uh, do that by hand. Couldn't do it by hand, by no means. You know, and, and now we've got a bunch of corn cobs left over. Now these are uh, really beneficial on the homestead. If y'all have watched our tomato planting videos, we use these in the bottom of our tomato holes as a sponge to hold moisture during dry weather so that the uh, tomato plants don't do without any moisture. Uh, and hey, even back in the uh, back in the old days, uh, I call it the old days, back in the outhouse days, uh, they used them for toilet paper, guys. The white ones were used to check yourself with. I mean, go figure that. It had to be... <laughs> Had to be some rough times back then. You know, the old Sears and Roebuck catalogs, I guess is what you used, and then you checked yourself with a white cob. But, uh, and I guess after that, they just dropped them down into the hole with the uh, outhouse. And uh, I've never used one, let me, let me say that. Uh, I guess you just dropped it down in the hole, and uh, the, uh, the bacteria and everything just ate up, and I guess it just turned back into good old compost at some point. But uh, nevertheless, uh, now comes the part I'm waiting for because we've got this new machine here and it's called a Bravo 4 uh, by, from Premier One and for all you crybabies out there we did buy it we didn't they didn't give it to us uh, we're going to use this to uh, to grind a lot of our stuff with now this thing will grind I bought all the screens to go with it it will it will grind feed uh, oats, uh, rye, barley, wheat, it'll grind corn, grind all these things. And I got all the different sleeves to go in, uh, screens, because one thing I, I can't eat the store-bought cornmeal and the store-bought, uh, uh, corn flour and stuff like that. Even if it says organic, lots of times it's still harvested with Roundup. They spray the whole field to kill it all at once. And, and it may be grown organically, but it's not harvested organically. And if I eat store-bought cornmeal or corn flour, even though it's organic, it tears me up on the inside. It just destroys my intestines. So if I grow my corn here at home where we use nothing on it, like this here, uh, I don't usually have a problem. It, my, my gut system doesn't seem to re, uh, reject it like it does store-bought stuff. 
And this still has all the uh, the germ in it and everything. I mean, nothing's been taken out of it. Now we are going to uh, do what's called winnow this. We're going to be going back and forth between two containers, uh, blowing all the chaff out of it and stuff like that before we grind it because it does still have some little pieces of cob in it off of the corn cob. It's still got silk saw in it and stuff like this. So we want it as clean as we can get it before we actually start making cornmeal grits and corn flour. I'll stop as I go along if I see pieces of corn cob. It's a little too heavy. It's blowing all this junk out. Yeah, it blows all that trash out of it. It will do it several times. You don't want to pour it too fast. Guys, there's a sweet spot when you come to doing this with your pan. If you get too close, you'll actually blow the kernels of corn out. You want to just be able to blow the chaff out. Now, we'll do it several times, so it's no big deal. This stuff's actually going all the way back to Ms. Warner's planter back yonder. It is. Guys, if I had not done this process and had just ground this, all of this would be in my cornmeal. This is all the way back to her planter back there where the fan's blowing. What's down here is not corn, it's the no. junk stuff. All the junk stuff. We're gonna look through it here and kind of inspect it a little bit. There's another bad kernel. See, when you got one like that, a, uh, a weevil has done been, if I can hold it where you can see a weevil's done been in the bottom of it here, and it's no good. I just wanna try to see if I can. There's another one right here. You can see how the weevils just eat the bottom of it up right there. We don't want that in there because they may be eggs in that. And you'll find pieces of cob, stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and the thing about it is, this is a little work. But guys, when I get through with this, this will be some of the best cornmeal that money can buy right here. I mean, you're not going to get any better than this. Nobody goes through it in a factory. At a factory, they don't do all this. They just grind everything up in it, and they don't even think twice about it. Well, we have 20 pounds of shelled out corn from a five-gallon bucket of Hickory King. So that, that's a pretty good return, I think. 20 pounds? If we get 20 pounds of cornmeal or grits or anything. That's pretty good. Of course, I realize we won't have quite that much once we grind it, maybe, but we'll see. Weight is weight. Weight is weight, but we'll see how it goes. All right. And this is a retractable top that goes down in there like that so that as you're grinding it, the stuff can pour down in it, but when you take it out, it pops up, it seals it off, and nothing can get in there. So we got to this down there we go. and it fits inside that nice and snug now it's all open 
Now what I have to do is I have to come off here to take the screen out of this. Now you have a you have a long one that goes up here in this corner up here. I think this one actually activates a uh, switch in there or something other that won't allow this thing to be turned on. Yeah, because we don't want that screen in there for making uh, cornmeal and grits and stuff like that. And you're supposed to be able to just slide it right out of there. I don't want to bend it. These are all the screens that come with it. You can see the difference in the diameter of the holes in them, depending on what you want your feed for, the different sizes. I would think that this one here would be what you'd use to make grits with, right here. And we're going to use that one in a yeah, minute. Yeah, this is flour. If you want corn flour or something like that, this is the one. This is called a number one right here. So we're going to make a little bit of a. Uh, we're going to make a little grits first, and see how it goes. Now, what we'll do when we get through making the grits is we'll probably sift it and. Any of the real fine particles that comes out with our sifter will go over into the uh, the flour. Let's see if we can get this thing to to go in here. You want to make sure that uh, it's got some places in here that it needs to fit. Okay, guys, there's some little tabs in here. You got a tab here, and there's tabs on the back sides. Uh, you got one up under the bottom here on the back side right there And then you got one on the inside one on the outside one on the inside You got to make sure it fits all of those tabs really good And sometimes you may have to take something little tap it just a little bit to get it to go in there But we've got it in you want to make sure it fits against that back really good in there snug all the way around it And we've actually got that happening All right now you want to make sure that this little lever right here is closed. Because what you want to do is you want to get your motor up and running on the Bravo 4 before you pour your corn in. You don't want to pour your corn in until you get it up and running. Now, I'm going to open it up just a little bit. This lever. Guys, we ran it till it quit making a lot of noise and got quiet. Let's see what it looks like. Now, all you gotta do is squeeze the top of the bucket down, slide it out, and then we're just gonna lift the top of the bucket off. Now, you see how it's sitting there, what I was telling you about. You see this right here? This is actually corn flour that's in it. Now, this looks a little coarse for, uh, for grits, doesn't it to you? According to what we're used to, yeah, I guess so. It looks a little coarse, but now there's a lot of corn flour in there. So we can sift the corn flour. There's a screen in between these two, and we're going to uh, we're going to make sure we go order the one that's in between these two because this really is a, a, a what we're looking for. This is more like your chick feed. Chick feed, baby chick feed. And then there's got to be one in between that would be your grits. Yeah. And then this is cornmeal and corn flour. Corn fl meal is almost like corn flour in places. In places, yeah. So that's what we're going to do.
we got in the bucket. Huh? Let's see what we got in the bucket. I'm gonna take this thing. I'm gonna try to clean it off. Ooh, it's warm in there. It's pretty hot. I don't know if that's a good sign. Been time. running how long? I've been running about 30 minutes. Wow. Look at that. It smells like cornmeal. And it is hot. Look at that. That's pure corn flour. It is. So we need to get that in something and get it in the freezer and let it just be cooling before we bag it. Oh yeah, it's got to be cooled down big time. But that's 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 a lot that's of corn awesome. flour. All right, guys, because we don't have the other screen to go in the uh, Bravo that we have here, the Bravo 4, we're going to do a lot of it by hand, which is okay because it's been a good learning experience. We have the old antique one here that's uh, Sifter by Bromwell, you know, that we've had for years and years and years. Uh, well, we decided we'd upgrade, so we got a new one. And, uh, God, this piece of crap. I mean, you know, we first turned it, man, we was like, yeah, this is going to be great. But then I put my finger on it, and look, it don't even turn. All it has is a square rod on the inside in there, and, and there's no way. These things don't clamp down on the rod to, to make it turn. I don't, uh, I don't know. As we've learned, if we run these uh, out of this bucket here, if we run this that we just ground with one of our screens through this sifter, there's a difference in the size of the screens here. This is a real fine mesh. This is a little coarser. What we get out of the one right here are grits here. But now, even in these grits is a lot of corn flour. We don't want the corn flour in our grits because we feel like that's just a waste. So what we do is we come over here and we put a little bit in this here and we've learned we can just sit here and shake it. If we keep sitting here bumping it, then the corn flour falls through it and we're not wasting all of our corn flour. And then basically what we have when we get through doing this is pure grits. And that's what we're after. We're after the pure grits. Make sure we got all of it. Oh, there's still some coming out. You can still see it falling there. So what we've got here, and we don't, we're not gonna get everything out of it, but we've got pure grits here now. Okay guys, we've got different size uh, sifters here, hand ones and, you know, we've we got this one right back here and then we've got this bigger one here. The screen sizes are the same, but the sifters are a lot larger in diameter, mm -hmm. which means it does a lot better job. There's more surface, uh, we found out, for the uh, corn flour to come through. And it, it makes it go a little faster. A lot faster. And then we've got, oh, look at that. Good old grits. 
And look at the corn Look flour. at the corn flour that's coming out of what most people would have just left in the grits. See that falling out right there? Look at that. That, my friends, is nice. And then we have this whole big bowl left right here of the real coarse stuff like this that we've already sifted out. Now we're gonna take the hand one and we're gonna grind a lot of this with the hand one. But you um, could use that one in. This one could be made, you could do this one if you let it soak a little while uh, before you make, it's kinda of like rice. If you just let it soak before you uh, actually tried to cook it, it would actually work out pretty good. This is cornmeal. Yes, with both of it in it. With both of them in it. Uh, this is corn and flour. This is grits. So just a different variety when you and it's really most cornmeal now is a cornmeal mix. It's basically nearly flour. It is most of us. If you buy it now, it's, it is a it's, mix. It's not as gritty as we make it here. Right. We've already got how many trays in the freezer already? Three I've of got them. Got four trays of corn flour. It's my uh, freeze dryer trays. We just cooling it off and getting it ready to package and just really basically keeping anything out of it till I can weigh it out and we'll weigh everything, package it up, write on it whether it's grits or flour and we'll tell you in a little bit just how much we got minus this big bowl over yeah, here. Yeah, this is minus this big bowl right here now. Because uh, we're going to run that through a different hand grinder that a subscriber gave us, and we're going to show you how that works. Yeah, I think this is, guys, this is why right here, this is why people used to didn't waste their food. When you have to sit here and do this to make all of this, now we ground this with a machine. If we'd been grinding this by hand, <laughs> oh, we'd if, still be on the first little batch. What if we had our two rocks? Oh, or like the, the Native Americans, and we had to sit here and, Use a mortar and pestle system to grind all this. No. no, we would get enough for a meal a day, and that'd be. Well, good. that was the whole idea behind it. They didn't go ahead and grind it all. They left it in its natural state, where it didn't lose its nutritional value. And they only ground what they needed for the day. Yes. Um, we're probably the only civilization that wants to save things for years. Well, I do know lots of lots of our, our of our subscribers and lots of people I know. Like keep like wheat, they, they buy the wheat berries and keep it in full, uh, in the form that it's in and then they grind it as they need it so that they don't lose its nutritional value. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. But we could do that too. We could just put the corn kernels up. We could, we could put them, them in the freezer and save them. Yeah. But that means we've got to get this machine out every time we want to make some and it's better to do it in one day and have everything stored. And I can oven can this. I and two, can, you know, we, you're right. And once we freeze this, technically we can take it back out and it's shelf stable then because there's not going to be any bugs in it because the freezing is going to kill all the bugs in it. And, I could and oven can or I could um, vacuum, vacuum seal, seal it. In bags. Yeah, once it's been froze. It would be awesome. And you want to freeze it for about two weeks. That kills any larva or eggs or anything in it from any weevils or anything like that or... Uh, so that it, it makes it uh, shelf stable. So and if you oven can that kills anything too. Yes Well, we finished our first grinding of corn we had two five gallon bucketfuls of corn on the cob that we uh, shelled out and ground what we ended up with was let's see one two three almost four pounds of grits and then we have one two three four five six and a half pounds of corn flour and then we have 23 and three quarter pounds of corn that's the remnants of what we had left over off of this to regrind by hand uh, for more corn flour and more grits out of it and corn meal this time because we don't have any corn meal out of it. So what have we learned from using the uh, the Premier One Bravo 4 uh, corn grinding or grain grinding system? Number one is you can't grind your corn through one sieve and turn around and reuse another sieve to grind it even finer. We tried that and what happens is the sieves stop up, 
the corn does not flow through the thing like it's supposed to, you have to use whole kernel corn going into it in order for it to crack it because there's a vibration that takes place in there that keeps everything kind of moving. Uh, an example would be that when we were making the corn flour, you have to use the whole kernel corn along with the flour, or flour sieve, which is the number one sieve, to make corn flour. We tried to use one of the other sieves and do it a little bit smaller and then feed it into it, it will not work. It will clog up on you. It's just not going to work that way. It doesn't flow free enough to do it. Plus it started getting, uh, now the motor never got too hot, but what happened was the corn being ground and fine, uh, uh, the fine like that from, a, from another screen, the corn got so hot that the bucket began to sweat and moisture began to form on the inside of it. And that's the last thing you want with corn flour is moisture forming on it. So that was lesson learned on that. Always use the whole kernel corn and make sure you have the right screen for what you're wanting to do because it won't grind it twice efficiently and do it right. Now that's what we've learned. Uh, as far as just being a really good machine, yes, it was a fantastic machine. It ground it in just a matter of uh, uh, minutes. It, it, it didn't take long at all. Now, if you're just grinding pure corn flour from whole kernel corn, it can take up to a couple of hours to do a bushel. So, uh, just as a heads up, but now if you're doing it through the, the screen that we were using there, making it into this size right here, uh, it, it didn't take, it took less than 10 15 minutes to do it. So it was uh, really fast to do that. What we done here, as y'all see, you'll see in the video, we done by hand until we can actually get the uh, second screen that we need to go with this, which will be next year before we use it. But we're gonna go ahead and order it because they said, I think they said it was on back order uh, until October or something like that. So we will be purchasing the other screen. Now we do have a little bit of corn left to grind for uh, chicken feed. It was the bad ears. We'll run that through for chicken feed, which will be fine. And we do have one more batch of corn to run through. Uh, that just wasn't quite dry enough yet. And it was the last to come off of the stalks and we didn't feel like it was dry enough to uh, actually put through this process. So we've got one more five gallon bucket of corn to do. I think, uh, well, let me put it this way. What we're trying to figure out is exactly how much corn flour, how many grits, how much cornmeal, we're going to actually get off of a certain size plot so that we know how much to plant to supply us for a year's worth of uh, this type of stuff. I think after this year, we're probably going to be able to get a pretty good idea of exactly how much corn we need to plant. Now, this is the Hickory King. Uh, another variety of corn, I don't know uh, how it's going to work out. But with the Hickory King, we will know exactly how much that we're going to have to plant in order to supply us with cornmeal, corn flour, and grits for a year. Now, I haven't actually counted the number of cobs in the bucket over there yet to see how many ears of corn this was, but I will do that, and I'm going to document uh, how many ears of corn we actually shelled off. We just thought we'd carry along on our journey of making grits, corn flour, and cornmeal here at Deep South Homestead, and trying out the Premier One Bravo 4V, Grain Grinder. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.